All right, let's unpack this. We're going deep on some fascinating LLM research today, specifically a new algorithm. It's called SCMCCTTS, and it's causing a stir because it's tackling a tricky problem how to make LLMs reason better A and D faster simultaneously. Yeah, it's a real challenge. I mean, LLMs are already pretty good at reasoning, you know. But as things get more complex, tasks with longer chains of thought, things tend to slow down. And accuracy can take a bit of a hit. That's the bottleneck this research is really trying to bust through. And they're claiming some big improvements too, right? I was reading that this new algorithm even outperforms OpenAI's O1 mini model. It does, yeah. On the Bloxworld dataset, at least, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, it's a classic benchmark for reasoning and planning tasks. And on this benchmark, SCMCTS showed a really impressive average accuracy improvement. We're talking 17.4% over O1 Mini. Whoa, hold on, 17.4%. Yeah. That's huge. And get this, they achieved this using a smaller LLM. Wait, a smaller LLM? Performing oh, better? Yeah. Oh. Right. It's pretty impressive. It's all down to a really smart combination of techniques. At its heart, it's still using Monte Carlo tree search, but, um, but it enhances that process in some very innovative ways. For example, instead of relying on just one reward model to guide the search, they're using three. Three? What, like a judging panel? Uh -huh. Yeah, kind of. So think of it this way. They have one reward that's based on contrastive JS divergence. This essentially pits a powerful LLM against a smaller one. To, uh, to try and highlight the experts' more nuanced reasoning, mm -hmm. then they have the log likelihood. That measures you know, how relevant the answer is to the question. Right, so it's keeping the LLM on track, making sure it doesn't go off on a exactly. tangent. Exactly, staying focused. And then the third one, they actually have the LLM evaluating the quality of its own answers. We call this self-evaluation. And it helps to flag any uncertainties in the reasoning process. So the LLM is like fact-checking itself. Pretty much, yeah. And by combining these three reward signals statistics, Statistically, the algorithm gets a much clearer picture of which reasoning paths are actually worth exploring. That's incredible. Speaking of efficiency, by the way, if any of you listening are coders yeah. looking to uh, supercharge your workflow, yeah. you should check out Echo Hive's 1000x cursor course. It's all about using AI powered tools like the cursor editor. 28 chapters, over 19 hours of content. The link's in their X bio. I'll have to check that out. Okay, so back to this triple threat reward system. Does the research actually show that each of these rewards is making a difference? Well, they did what are called ablation studies, essentially mm -hmm. removing each component one by one to see how it affects performance. And, uh, and yeah, every single reward model did contribute measurably to the accuracy boost. It really is the synergy of all three that makes it so effective. It's the whole package deal, not mm. just one magic bullet. Hmm. But you mentioned earlier this algorithm was faster too, right? Hmm. Where does that speed boost come from? Right. So they've got this thing called speculative decoding integrated. It's a very smart way to divide the labor, really. It lets a smaller LLM handle like the easier parts of the problem, saving the big, powerful LLM for those really complex steps. Ah, so it's delegating. Right. Like having an assistant handle the busy work so the expert can focus on the big picture. Exactly. And because they're already using a smaller LLM for the contrastive decoding, they can use the same one for the speculative decoding. So there's no extra computational overhead. That's very clever. It's like getting double the efficiency for the price of one. Mm. So we've established this algorithm is more accurate and faster. But how does that actually play out in the Blocks World test? Well, they found that SCMCTS consistently outperformed other approaches. And the more complex the task, the bigger the difference became. That's exciting. Did they, um, did they do anything to visualize how the algorithm works? Like, can we actually peek into the thought process of the LLM as it's reasoning through these problems? Yes, actually. They visualized the distribution of those reward values we discussed. And it gives some fascinating insights into how the LLM is thinking, so to speak. So for rewards like log likelihood, for example, they saw normal distribution patterns. And what does that tell us? It kind of points to a very balanced and consistent approach to reasoning. But then for the contrastive JS divergence and the self-evaluation rewards, they observed half normal distributions. So not as smooth. Exactly. It suggests that the LLM is encountering more uncertainty at certain stages, or maybe it's having to make more strategic decisions in those moments. You can almost see the LLM having to pause and think things through. That's really cool. So we can actually glean some understanding of the inner workings of the LLM just from these reward distributions. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's a step towards making these complex algorithms more interpretable, which is so crucial, especially as they become more powerful. Absolutely. Speaking of boosting power and efficiency, yeah. quick reminder about that Echo Hive's 1000x cursor course. <laughs> 
For all you coders listening, it's like a cheat code teaching you how to become a coding ninja using those AI power tools. Link is in their eggs bio. Sounds interesting. So back to the research, besides analyzing the reward distributions, did they dive into any other specific aspects of the algorithm? Oh yeah, mm. they got into the nitty gritty of their implementation. For instance, they use four bit quantized checkpoints to improve efficiency. And uh, they also compared using completion mode versus chat mode in the LLMs, which actually had some interesting challenges. So really getting into the weeds of how they built this thing, that might be a deep dive for another day though, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, probably, but it just shows the thoroughness of their research. They wanted to understand every little thing at play. Right, well, this has been a great overview of SEMCTS. Lots to think about. And I'm sure our listeners are eager to hear more about the implications of all this. Definitely. And the implications are huge. I mean, if we can consistently make LLMs more accurate and efficient at reasoning, the potential applications are pretty much limitless. Limitless, really. Okay, so paint me a picture. What kind of real-world problems could this tech actually tackle? Well, just imagine LLMs. Like, actually helping scientists to solve complex research problems, maybe designing new drugs, life-saving drugs, yeah. or optimizing energy grids, you know, <laughs> to get the most out of them. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? I mean, we could see personalized education, like, completely tailored to each student's needs. Or maybe even AI systems that collaborate with artists and musicians, yeah. creating entirely new art forms. Absolutely. The possibilities are, well, mind-boggling. But, you know, there's always another side to the coin. With any powerful tech, there are challenges, right? Yeah. And considerations, things we need to address. For sure. So what are some of the uh, the hurdles that researchers need to overcome to really un unlock the potential of this algorithm? Well, one of the big ones, they actually highlighted it in the paper, is this issue of step splitting. Step splitting. What's that? Right. So for SEMCTS to work. On tasks that are more complex than, say, Bloch's world, researchers need to figure out how to, you know, how to break down these real-world problems into smaller, more manageable steps, ones that the algorithm can actually grab. So it's like taking something super complex, mm -hmm. like writing a novel or composing a symphony, yeah. and translating that into, like, a set of instructions, right? Ones that an LLM can follow step by step. Exactly. And that can be incredibly tough, mm -hmm. especially for tasks that involve a lot of creativity or, you know, Ambiguity, subjective judgment, things like that. Right. It's like trying to teach a computer to understand humor or appreciate art. It's not just about following a set of rules, is it? No, not at all. And this is actually one area where those chain of thought methods might still have a bit of an edge. Oh, really? I thought we'd said that SCMCTS was like superior. Well, it is in terms uh -huh. of accuracy and speed for okay. so those well-defined problems like blocks world, remember. But chain of thought is more flexible. It doesn't need this strict step splitting process. So okay. it can be more adaptable, especially to tasks that are less structured or maybe involve those more subjective elements we were talking about. So it's a trade-off, precision versus adaptability. Exactly. Each approach has its strengths and weaknesses. Right. And that's an important takeaway here, I think. It's not about finding the one best algorithm. It's about understanding the... Um, <laughs> the nuances of each one when they're most effective. It makes you wonder if we'll start seeing, like, hybrid approaches, taking the best of both worlds. Oh, I think that's definitely where the field is heading. That's exciting. Lots of potential for innovation there. And speaking of innovation, got to give another shout out to that Echo Highs 1000X cursor course. For any developers listening, it's all about coding at, like, mm. warp speed using AI-powered tools you can find the link in their X bio. It's worth checking out. I'll have to take a look. So back to SCMCTS, you mentioned earlier that this research, um, it highlighted the importance of understanding those different approaches, their nuances and all that. Yeah. What are some other key takeaways you'd, uh, you'd want our listeners to really remember? Well, the performance improvements are impressive, obviously, but I think what's just as important is the focus on interpretability. Right, we can't just blindly trust these algorithms, can we? No matter how good they are. We got to understand how they're getting their answers. Exactly. We need to be able to look under the hood, so to speak. And this research takes some important steps in that direction by breaking down the algorithm, analyzing how each piece contributes to its success. They've given us a much clearer picture of that reasoning process. It's not just a black box anymore, is it? We can actually trace the logic, see the decisions being made. Right. And that's so important for building trust, making sure these powerful technologies are used responsibly. Transparency is key. Especially when you're dealing with systems that have the potential to, you know, 
really impact so many areas of our lives. Absolutely. The more we understand how they work, the better equipped we are to guide their development, ensure they're used for good. It feels like we're at a real turning point in AI development. It does, doesn't it? These breakthroughs are just incredible. Yeah. It's exciting, but also a little daunting maybe. Yeah, I agree. It's both for sure. The potential is huge. Right. But we have to be mindful of the risks. Absolutely. We're in uncharted territory here. Need to tread carefully. I think that's a great way to put it. Hmm. We have to be asking the big questions, you know? Not just what can we do, but what should we do? Exactly. The future of AI. It's not set in stone. Right. It's something we're shaping. It's an ongoing process. Every choice, every line of code. Every conversation. It all contributes how it unfolds. So it's not just about the algorithms then, or the data. No. It's about the values we build into these systems, the goals we set for them. Right. And that's a conversation that everyone needs to be a part of, not just the engineers and the scientists. Right. Everyone. Philosophers, ethicists, policymakers, artists. Oh, sure. Everyday people, everyone. Because at the end of the day, it's about shaping a future where AI serves humanity, not the other way around. Absolutely. A future where AI empowers us to solve our biggest challenges, unlock new possibilities, create a more just and equitable world. A vision worth striving for. Yeah. It's an exciting time to be following all of this for sure. This research into SCMCTS, it's really just one example of the incredible progress being made with LLM reasoning, right? It is, yeah. And, you know, it's not just about making these models, you know, smarter. It's about making them more, uh, yeah. more useful, more relevant mm -hmm. to the real world challenges we're facing. Right. We talked earlier about step splitting. Yeah. And how that's one of the hurdles to, you know, applying this algorithm to more tasks, a wider range of things. Yeah. What are some of the other areas where uh, where you think more research is needed? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that comes to mind is generalizability. Right now, we've seen a CMCTS work on this one benchmark, Blocks World, as we've said. But how well will it do on um, on other types of reasoning tasks, different domains, different types of knowledge. That's something researchers will need to investigate further. Yeah, so it's kind of like, yeah. just because a car can drive on a test track, right? Right. Doesn't mean it can handle off-road terrain. Exactly. And those different environments, different tasks, they mm. might need some tweaks to the algorithm, no. some fine-tuning of those reward models, maybe, or even entirely new approaches to, uh, to right. step splitting. There's a lot of exciting work still to be done. For sure. It's like, We've discovered this amazing new tool, mm. but we're still figuring out how to like really use it mm -hmm. to unlock its full potential. Yeah, I like that analogy. And you know, as we learn more, as we get better at refining these tools, right. we can't lose sight of that human element. Right, going back to that idea of responsible AI. Exactly. It's not just about what's possible, but about using this technology ethically for the benefit of everyone. Absolutely, it's a conversation we need to keep having a responsibility we all share. Well, this has been a fantastic deep dive, mm -hmm. really insightful look into the world of LLM reasoning. It has. Oh. I know I've learned a lot and I hope our listeners have too. Me too. It's always great to explore these topics mm -hmm. and, you know, really think about what they mean for the future. Absolutely. Before we wrap up, one last reminder for the coders out there. If mm -hmm. you want to learn how to code like a speed demon using the power of AI, you got to check out Echo Hive's 1000X Cursor course. It's over 19 hours of content, 28 chapters, huh. all about maximizing your coding efficiency. You can find the link in their X bio. That sounds like a great resource. Yeah, I might have to check it out myself. Uh-huh, me too. All right, well, that's all for today's deep dive. Big thanks to our expert for all their insights and to all of you listening, of course. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those questions coming.